I'm Mark from QuickType. The specification of an API is not just the stuff that goes over the, or the HTTP stuff, like which endpoint do I need to call, which method do I need to use, what do I need to put in the headers. It's also the types of data that goes through those requests. I'm sure some of you have had this issue before. You were working, uh, talking to some API, using Postman, you had a collection, you had all your requests lined up. Uh, you kind of know, you kind of see what's coming back. But now you have this problem, oh, I have all of this JSON. Now I need to write types in my programming language to represent that JSON. Now maybe I need to write serializers and deserializers to deal with that. Maybe I need to support more than one programming language. And it's a lot of work. Well, no more. Here we are looking at the uh, imager API. Uh, this is one of the endpoints. And you can see that uh, there's an uh, example response. This is very important because QuickType is going to generate types as well as serializers and deserializers from this example data. So all we need to do is we export it uh, as a Postman collection. It goes to our desktop. And then we'll just switch to quicktype.io. And we will uh, drag and drop it in. And there we go. You can see on the left that all of that data was imported. And on the right, you can see that not only do we have the types, we also have all of the documentation that was in your Postman collection. And in this case, we're looking at Swift. Um, but we can also change that up. Maybe, sometime soon. And uh, choose C Sharp, maybe, if that's what you need. And, and that's it. You have your types. <laughs> this is all of the languages that we currently support. We're constantly working on more. Um, we not only support JSON as an input, but um, so that you can be a little bit more rigorous, or actually a lot more rigorous, we also support JSON schema. We also, by the way, export JSON schema so you can infer the JSON schema from the types uh, in your API. And uh, we also support GraphQL. Uh, that's a fairly new thing, for us at least. Unless you think that, oh, I've seen this kind of stuff a million times before. Uh, there's websites that do that already. I'm going to show you a few things that you probably haven't seen before. Here on the left, you can see that uh, this is some sort of uh, temperature data uh, JSON document. And uh, you can see that, that these number keys here, they're probably going to be different with each request. right? You don't want to make one class that has 189512 uh, as a property, but you probably want to represent it as a dictionary. And QuickType actually figures that out by looking at how, do, like, do those, do those keys look like the names of properties, or is that just some random stuff that's probably going to change every time? Uh, and we have other heuristics, too. Um, here's another thing that we figure out. This is the very important Pokemon database. Um, Pokemon, I've been told, have certain types of weaknesses, uh, but uh, this weaknesses field here, this is not free form. You can't just put anything in there. You can't just say, oh, po popcorn is my Pokemon's weakness. That doesn't exist. Um, so these are enums. And we actually, as you can see here on the right, this is Rust, by the way, um, you can see that QuickType detects that those are enums. And obviously, we do that. You know, we see 1,000 strings, and maybe they just have 10 different values. And so we go like, oh, OK. Uh, it's probably an enum. Another thing that we do is that we consolidate uh, and combine types across different request endpoints. So in this case, you can see some kind of uh, Spotify-ish uh, API where there's artists endpoints and album endpoints and playlist endpoints. And the albums have artists, and they also have tracks. And the playlists also have tracks. And the artist is an artist. And QuickType figures out that the artist from the album looks very much like the artist from the artist endpoint. 
and the tracks look the same across the playlist and the album, so you just get one type for each. We also have extensions for uh, Xcode, uh, as well as uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, Visual Studio that just let you paste JSON as code. Um, it has, doesn't have much functionality, but, but a lot of people like using that for very quick prototyping. And very importantly, we have a command line interface. This is important because it lets you automate quick type, and it lets you build quick type into your development workflow. In our long-term vision is that we, we want to rid the world of untyped data. So ideally, you give us the data that you, know that, that you don't know the types of, and we'll figure out what it is. So obviously, some things that we're working on is yet smarter type inference. We also, we're also working on customization in the sense that you can use QuickType as a library and customize um, the code emitters to generate code that's more useful for your uh, use case. And as well as more input formats, CSV and XML are uh, the most important ones. And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, QuickType is open source. Uh, it's available on GitHub. We're on Slack where you can talk to us. Yeah, thank you very much. Questions? Anybody have questions? So this looks like a really great tool. What's your mode to generate income from this? Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Just have time for one more question. Anybody have another thing for Mark? Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.